Now we are well on track toward unlocking the mysteries of some of those special abilities. Progress in brain research has been due both to the increasing number of scientists interested in studying the brain and to unprecedented technological innovations. These new tools give us a window to the brain. The cerebral cortex is the outermost covering of the brain which has evolved in humans further than in any other species and what is most responsible for making humans human. It is also the structure most associated with higher mental functions. With its multiple folds, ridges, and grooves, the cortex is made up of two similar-looking hemispheres joined at the middle by an extensive bundle of nerve fibers which cross from side to side. One of the keys to understanding the brain is to recognize that nerve cells are highly interconnected. Any given nerve cell may make thousands of connections with other nerve cells. The orange-looking surface in this image is the cerebral cortex. Since the size of the brain is limited by the space within the skull, the only way to increase the amount of cortical tissue is to fold it. With a specialized method, we can look deep into the cortex and see individual cells. Here they appear black and have branches coming from them. As magnification increases, we see greater detail in the network of the branches. These are dendrites, which are the appendages of neurons which will receive synaptic connections from other cells. Connections are made with another specialized process called an axon. The place where communication occurs between an axon and a dendrite is called a synapse. Synapses are the communication links between neurons. Remember, thousands can occur along a single dendrite. Understanding how neuronal communication occurs at the synapse is one key to understanding the most interesting questions, like how memories are stored and how learning occurs. Indeed, scientists now believe that disruptions of normal activity occurring at synapses are involved in several of the disorders we call mental illness. Our current understanding of how synapses work is represented in this computer animation. As we dive deeper into the cell's own structure down into a single axon terminal at a synapse, we see small round objects which are the synaptic vesicles. They are like tiny balloons, miniature containers filled with chemical neurotransmitters. When an electrical impulse reaches the nerve terminal, proteins in the watery soup orchestrate the movement of these vesicles toward the membrane, forming one side of the synapse. The visualization is slowed down here, but in real time this process happens in less than a thousandth of a second. As the transmitter-filled vesicles touch the inside of the nerve terminal membrane, their own membrane fuses with it. When this happens, the inside of the vesicle opens into the synaptic cleft and transmitter molecules diffuse across this tiny space to reach their target receptors on the other side. This causes electrical conduction to occur, completing the propagation of the neuronal message across the cleft. The processes of neuroconduction and neurotransmission occur by the billions throughout the human brain. It is this complex interplay of chemical, electrical, and physical events which underlies the rich tapestry of everyday experiences, the sights we see, the sounds we hear, the feelings we experience, the activities we initiate, and the ideas we ponder. Even slight errors or variations in any of these neural events can lead to the kind of abnormalities which underlie most of brain disorders, including mental illness. By understanding the intricacies of neural activities and how they are related to cognitive and behavioral processes, we are on the threshold of providing specific treatments and ultimately cures and preventions in our mission to ensure that mental Through investigating the brain on the chemical, functional, and anatomical level, scientists unravel the vast power of the brain in health as well as disease. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that give rise to our everyday life, our actions, our moods, and our behaviors. The chemicals pass from neuron to neuron via synapses. 
Within the synapse, the glucose metabolism of the mitochondria and the electrical impulse of the action potential cause the vacuoles to intersect with the cellular wall and release neurotransmitters between junction membranes. Different functions and behaviors are localized in certain brain regions. Using this knowledge, the brain's many different mental functions can be broken down into more easily approachable elements. By looking at these smaller parts of brain regions and activities, a more comprehensive understanding of overall brain function can be built. For example, the circuits involved in vision receive information from the retina. After initial processing, these circuits analyze information in different streams, so that there's one stream of information describing what the visual object is, and another stream is concerned with where the object is in space. Once function is understood in the less complicated elements of brain organization, then this information can be reassembled to help understand the workings of the whole brain. Laboratory rats guide researchers to form a better understanding of complicated brain processes. For example, studying the rat within a maze helps uncover general principles about learning that can be applied to many species, including humans. Rats are good at remembering where things are and how to get them. Here the rat has learned how to find a tasty treat each time he walks around the triangular maze. But there's a catch. He has to turn in the maze in the opposite direction from the last try in order to get his treat. First left, then right, then left, then right. Using sophisticated techniques, it's possible to listen to the sounds of groups of brain cells firing before the rat makes his left-right decisions. Listen how the neurons fire very quickly just before he makes his turns. That is the sound of his brain cells remembering where the treat is and where to get it. The lessons learned from the rat can be used to understand a similar process in the human brain. To do that, scientists can use technologies developed in recent decades such as functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. This allows the imaging of functional activity in the living brain. The fMRI machine makes it possible to take pictures of activity within a living brain. This is not a picture of the neurons or pathways, but instead it's an image of the activity occurring among those neurons and pathways. This is an indirect approach as it uses a marker for neuronal firing. In this case, it detects blood flow and blood oxygenation to provide maps of brain activity. We can see the localized increases in blood flow as the brain capillaries expand in size. Blood flows more rapidly through a larger tube. This increase can be used to map brain activity in response to specific tasks and stimuli, like remembering. As with all other organs, the brain is subject to malfunction. Complex problems like understanding depression and schizophrenia can now be addressed using these and other techniques. Here's an example of the kind of information we get when comparing the brains of normal and mentally ill people. The image on the left is from a normal subject. On the right is a schizophrenia patient, where we can see the vast differences in the amount and location of brain activity. Clearly, several systems, including higher cognitive processes, hearing and movement, are impacted in this disease. Imaging provides a way to identify how the brain processes information differently in schizophrenia. As scientists are learning more about brain circuitry, they are learning more about which circuits are involved with specific tasks. This makes it possible to compare brain regions in healthy people and people with mental illnesses. However, mental disorders are very complicated and still not well understood. These disorders affect our most complex brain processes, like thinking, mood, and behavior. There are several factors that contribute to mental illnesses, including environmental conditions, social events, genetics, 
and large chemical imbalances. What is clear is that mental illnesses are as devastating as any physical illness. Ultimately, basic and clinical research will unlock the mysteries of mental illnesses.